Hey, Jeff Carlisi here from 38 Special, and we're rocking it up right here with Traders Nation. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Traders Nation. My pleasure to have back with us once again Sam McElroy. He's co-founder of At Financial, the at sign, and At Financial Investments. Sam, welcome back to Traders Nation. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always a pleasure, Sam. Always. Hey, listen, jobless claims dropped to a 49-year low. Sam, you know, what paved the way for this tremendous uh, prosperity that we're seeing? You know, I, I think there's a lot of different things that are going on. Yeah. Um, you know, if we just look at it from a general standpoint, I think over a number of years, we've had a strengthening economy in terms of the jobless numbers. Okay. Um, we've been a declining rate in terms of jobless numbers for a while here, and I think that this is just kind of continuing along that trend line. I think there's some other variables that kind of go into it in terms of, you know, an aging population and some people just dropping out of the workforce, uh, you know, other things like that. But I certainly don't think that that's enough. Sure. To, uh, to fully account, nor would I use that to discount the fact that jobless numbers are actually at a really good point you know, sure. right now, historically. Sure, sure. And certainly, like you said, I mean, there's a lot of things that make up a recipe, if you will, Sam, that make up uh, the number of, uh, you know, with this record 49-year low that we're seeing, uh, growth in business, right? Uh, people, they're looking to hire and uh, money coming back into the economy, a consumer economy. So there's a lot of things that make up what we're looking at, right? Yeah, I think, I think that any time you uh, are working your way out of a recession yeah. and you have a number of other variables that are kind of going into it, it opens up the door and an opportunity for businesses to be able to fill spots, to be able to grow, and to be able to expand. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much I would attribute, you know, kind of money coming back in and some of those different pieces to be able to uh, look at people hiring because, in a sense, the one metric that I was really hoping to see increase yeah. still seems a little stagnant to me, and that's, that's really the average wage increases. Okay. So I think we're doing a great job in terms of getting people employed and getting them working. Yeah. Now I want to see a lot more money kind of going back into, uh, you know, pouring into the economy, being able to... Uh, help the average wage continue to increase as the average consumer sure. can help contribute towards GDP growth as well. Do you think we may see that? Because that's certainly that would maybe a trailing effect. Employers are having a hard time finding people, and that's going to come up here in a second. But so since they're having a hard time finding people, certainly they may want to make sure that the people, the employees that they have now, um, are going to be taken care of and, and a wage increase, bonuses, uh, things like that may be attractive for companies to employ to keep good people within their ranks, right? Yeah. You know, I was having this very conversation with somebody literally yesterday, yeah. and uh, that's the way that we're supposed to see this flow from, a, from an economic standpoint. You know, you want to see the demand in the marketplace get a little bit stronger sure. so that uh, so that corporations do have to increase wages and incentives to keep key talent. Sure. That then should translate into inflation because businesses need to sell their goods for a little bit more to be able to cover those expenses. Yeah. And the Fed should then respond by raising interest rates. That's yeah. the way that we want to see all of this play out. And it very well may. Right. Um, I think one of the things we need to just be cognizant of is the fact that while all this is happening and strengthening, there are some other uh, warning signs, so to speak, that are also starting to emerge. I, I read an article uh, from, uh, I think that came out last night or yesterday or something like that, yeah. uh, that was basically quoting uh, a senior official from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and they were basically saying that right now 14 of the 19 indicators that they look at to kind of gauge market directionality yeah. are now starting to look a little bit bearish. And that doesn't mean that the economy is slowing or that the economy has issues. The question we have to watch, though, is just how uh, connected the economy is uh, to the stock market and whether or not the stock market, which is by many accounts due for a little bit of a pullback, Sure. If that's going to be able to slow some of the progress we've seen from an economic standpoint. You know, as a trader, it almost sounds like the, the gains that we've made in the jobs is almost, it's like the market, right, is where we have to digest those gains, and then we have to see where we go from here. Um, do you see a continuation in the job markets, and, and will we be able to keep up this pace, or your thoughts? Yeah, my general thoughts is that I don't see, I think under most circumstances, the answer to that would be yes. I think that I would see that people would continue being employed. There's a great big if 
which is if the stock market cannot unravel this. You know, we're, we're seeing two converging variables, which is the stock market having almost a 10-year run in terms of a cyclical bull market. Um, but we're seeing some issues starting to creep in in this last 30 days or so yeah. that's suggesting that that may not continue at this pace. The question is, if the market were to be negative or were to pull back, what would that do in terms of the Fed's plans to continue raising interest rates, and would that bleed into corporations having to either slow their growth or, uh, unfortunately, go back to you know laying people off to try to keep their own financial solvency? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, uh, what makes comes to mind to me is that with the number of surplus jobs, and this is what I was referring to a couple a couple minutes ago, whereas employers are having a hard time finding skilled workers all right so there's there's a surplus of jobs that are out there right now and i'm wondering in my head i'm thinking out loud is is there a problem with employers um finding actually skilled workers to fill those positions and and if so there's certainly some opportunity for there for some people that are out of work looking for work or maybe even have a hard time finding work i wonder if they can shift into those skilled uh type of skills that these employers are looking for your thoughts yeah, I think that's definitely an opportunity, and, and it's not a unique one. It's one that we've seen kind of continually emerging as technology has continued to develop throughout the course of our history. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of just industries changing and needing people that can kind of keep pace and change with the industry. Right. So some of this has always been about people getting retooled in terms of their skill set. Sure. Um, I remember, I don't know how many years ago, maybe five or six years ago, there was a strong emphasis in starting to help promote programs that was going to train people to have new skills right. really towards the same end or the same goal. Right. Yeah. And I think companies, what they're also doing too, because they're really proactive on this, they, they realize that the demand that they need as their business, what their business needs are. They realize what that demand is. <clears throat> and if they start having difficult time recruiting folks, I think they're coming up with ways of training and planning so they can do that internally also, Sam. And that would be a good solution. You yeah. know, it's always that, that cost benefit, you know, exercise that you gotta go through. How much does it take yeah. to have a you know, a good training program to get people certified or whatever they need to do to be sure. able to do the job. Sure. But I definitely think that corporations trying to solve this problem on their own yeah. is uh is gonna be a better, more long term, permanent, effective solution right. um, than waiting for people in and of themselves to be because it ends up being cyclical. You know, if I'm out of work and they say, well, you need to have this skill set for you to be able to get this job. But sure. I'm thinking, well, I'm trying to feed my family, so how am I going to you know, take time to go learn this skill set? It ends up being really problematic. But sure. if I can come into a corporation where I have a job and the job is going to train me how to do the job effectively, then it solves a lot of those problems simultaneously. Yeah, I agree. Now, granted, I, I think that it's, it's, it's risky for the business to do it, probably costly, but if they have that need, that certainly is one solution for some of these larger corporations to fulfill that need and, you know, and help relieve that stress on trying to find that perfect candidate uh, that they're going to need for that position. What's your outlook as we finish up here in 2018 and then maybe even to 2019, Sam? In, in terms of the job market or in yeah. terms of the market? Yeah, in the whole? terms of the job market in whole and then in, maybe even the market too. We're almost out of time. Yeah. You know, I don't see a whole lot of change, I think, ending out in 2018. I think in 2019, it remains to be seen because I think a lot of it is going to be unfortunately tied to what happens with the market yeah. uh, towards the end of 2018, or early 2019. Yeah. You know what? And I think the feds have something to do with that, too, because I think they're a big player in this. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of nervous cats that are out there, you know, with the rising, with the rate of the rise of the Fed and certainly uh, the potential slowing of that. All right. So we're out of time. Sam, where can we find you at? Yeah, so the easiest place is the website, www.atfinancial.com. Okay, atfinancial, the letters atfinancial.com, Sam? Yep, you right. got it. Head on over there today, folks. Check out Sam's website, atfinancial.com. Sam, always good time. Thanks for being with us today. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.